So this artistic bowl took me a really long time to make. I learned a new complex 3D modeling program. I had issues with the tessellation on the machine mold. I had one pop off the machine. I had some bugs that were eating some of my wood that I had to work around. It was just tricky and took a lot longer than I had imagined to get the way I wanted. So let's jump into the process by starting with the computer work. So first off, I've been learning a 3D program called Blender to model this shape and some other cool shapes. This is one of the first shapes I designed and I made a basic flower leaf and mathematically manipulated the shape with a thing called geometry nodes inside of Blender to make the flower bowl itself. The drips are cut by a virtual cutter and I created that virtual cutter through a random noise texture also using geometry nodes that create the bumpiness used to cut through it. The actual computer aided manufacturing, the CAM part, I did in Fusion 360, so that generates the tool paths for the actual machining. I then moved into the shop and glued up several pieces of wood to make the stock pieces. The first was made out of pine that had some blue fungus staining in it that I milled from some wood that fell down on my property. Another one was madrone, which is a beautiful wood, but I self milled it and when I dropped the trees it immediately got attacked by bugs and they attacked the outer edges of it more close by the sapwood. So the center was pretty good and I could get enough of a large area out by chopping off the sides to make up a good stock piece. I also did one out of solid oak and another out of cherry. There are so many ways to hold a workpiece down to a CNC table. The way that I like doing is using blue tape and CA glue and you want to make sure the tape is really stuck down well and I will spray a little bit of accelerator on the table before I push it down and let it sit for a while to dry. Another way that I will do the mold is to hold it down with traditional CNC or machining uh, clamps. I use a Heimer to indicate in the X, Y, and Z axis, zeroing it out on the machine once I find the edge. A wiggler also works and is a much cheaper way to do it. Once I machined out the bowls, I realized I had a problem. They were showing tessellation up, meaning I had little rectangles showing up in my piece that was actually machined in. I cured this by sanding it away, but I wanted to machine it away too. And I realized it was a mistake in my actual um, model where it was showing smooth to me visually, but all the squares are what was being machined out. So I had to divide the model a little bit more to get more finer detail. And I did a little test piece to make sure it worked out. Once the mold machining was done, I could go over and do some epoxy work. I want to fill up the mold with epoxy and all the way to the top and not have it spill out. So I just use some silicone sealant around the top of the mold to keep the epoxy in. So I forgot to seal my first one and that worked out okay but another one got lots of air bubbles. The second one I sealed and did some sanding and this prevented a lot of bubbles and worked a lot better. Once the epoxy cured I put it back in the planer to get back to the original stock height. There are so many ways to hold down your workpiece to the work table and here I'm trying double sided tape to see how it works. It sticks down really well but it's incredibly hard to remove and indicating it in is also more difficult to do. 
So I just loosened my spool board table and tapped it to indicate it in here. The machining operation is pretty cool to watch. I start with a 3 8 of an inch bit to do the roughing operation, and then I go over to it a quarter inch ball nose bit with a half round on the top essentially to do the finishing operation. Here's where I started to get into some trouble. On the bowls, I will attach a small piece of plywood to the bottom in order to have an area to clamp to a vise and indicate it in and machine the top and inside the bowl. Now I used CA glue, but I didn't attach it for quite tight enough or long enough. And this was one of my downfalls. I put in the vise, I line it up. There are other ways to do this, but this works pretty well for me. started the machining and there was a ton of chatter clearing the side stock and even more when it was on the back ingrain portion. I stopped it and I decided to trim off that extra bits to see if that would help with machining and make it be a little bit less of an aggressive cut. So I started the cut again and it got ejected. So at this point, this piece is pretty much lost. I don't have anywhere I can indicate it in. One of the reasons I leave a square on the top is so I can indicate in a proper X, Y, and uh, know exactly where my origin point is going to be, and so everything lines up properly. Without that, mm, I can't really do anything. So I feel like I didn't use enough glue or glue it for long enough, and on a second piece, I used 5-minute epoxy to make sure it was really bonded well. And that seemed to work. I also did a less aggressive cut. I thought it was a good idea to remove the stock on the top, so I hand cut that off before I started in the machine. So once it's done, I have to cut off that bottom piece. I generally do it on the bandsaw and then clean it up on a disc sander. From that point on, we're at the finishing stage. So I can sand off the epoxy and make it smooth. The more I sand it, the better it'll be. I think I sand it here to 320, but I should sand a little bit more on the epoxy to get rid of some more of the fine scratches. I like to finish the bowls with this Osmo top oil. It works pretty well, super easy to apply, and uh, super durable. I put about three, maybe four coats on, letting it dry about 12 hours between coats. This is my Lotus Bowl in Madrone with purple epoxy.